Here we are at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the running of the Penzoil 200 and the next race in the quest for the championship of the Mountain Dew Arca Series Season number 2. On the pole for today's race is Ethan Lin in the 22s, outside the 45, Jonathan Buford. In third, you have Code Luigi, fourth, Trey Raining, rang up the top five, you got Carter Friedman. Then sixth, you got Jake West. Seventh is Oscar Isaac, eighth, Steve Larker. Jason Larker, second in points, and ninth, and rang up the top ten, you got Ryan Brommer. The rest of the field goes Colton Young, then Julius Anderson, Steve Morgan, and Alexander Rowe, Cynthia Bright, and then DJ Reed. Then JJ Reed, your points there, starting towards the back of the field, below the line to his outside. Then John Gamet and Luke Rains to his inside, Greg Lee and Max Anderson, Jose Fernandez and Derek Hamill, Isaac Nichols and Michael Canto, then Tim Randolph and Cortez Newman, Evan Hunter and Jonathan Rains, Timothy Heath and Alexander Cornish. And rounding out the field, we got Danny Bright in the 32 in the 33rd position as we now go down trackside to hear the command. All 33 cars rolling off here for 21 laps around the Charlotte Motor Speedway in a race that last season determined a lot in terms of championships. We'll talk about that later on in the race. But last season, only 15 cars finished on the lap, only 16 finished the race, and I would wager only about 7 finished without damage as there was a big crash. So the pace car is in. 21 laps, as we mentioned, around Charlotte. Ethan Lynn on pole. Jonathan Beaver to his outside. Let's go racing at Charlotte. Green flag. Let's get going here, Charlotte. Ethan Lin was ready to get going. He jumped that restart and got away from Luigi and the others behind. As they hit turn three for the first time here today, off of four, they will come. Ethan Lin will easily lead lap number one as we now have 20, 20 laps to go here at Charlotte. Ethan Lin has a pretty good lead there. He can try and protect as they will start battling for a second behind. Luigi going to try and get down from car Friesen. Of course, Friesen with the drafting up is going to get underneath that 10 car and trying to get right on by their three wide bind. I believe Lord Delano, the one stuck up behind the 0-2. Bright blue number 02 car stuck up high. You don't want to be up high three wide. And Ethan Lynn doing a great job actually pulling away just a little bit. Lord Donald up against the wall again. Down into, I believe that's 69. John Gamma's going around. He is. He gets his teammate a little bit. And Tim Randolph involved. And I believe that's Evan Hunter. No, Tim Thief in the 58. Caution comes out for a. Uh, Multi-car wreck here at Charlotte. They're racing back Ethan Lynn with the race lead. The battle for second car. Freezing the one up top. Oscar Isaac behind. Or down low, excuse me. How about uh, Jason Larker get up, get up there into the top five. As they come off the corner, Oscar Isaac will get to second as Ethan Lynn leads them back to the caution flag. As John Gammon, the 69 car, goes around and collects a few others. Let's check what happened here with this early caution. We said the O2 of Lord Delano was through it up top and that... Could have been a disaster coming off of four, and it was. She gets into the wall just a little bit, and John Gambit's down there. Gambit then goes down. That's where Evan Hunter gets involved as Hunter goes flying through the grass up in the air. Luckily, he keeps the car under control. John Gambit comes back up. His teammate Alexander Cornish is there. He makes some slight contact with him. Tim Randolph gets put into the wall, the 52, and then comes down front of Tim Heath with nowhere to go, and Heath makes some contact with that 69 car. So overall, I believe about four or five cars got damaged and all that. Randolph, the 52. That is the team that won this race last season. However, it was a different driver behind the wheel. They probably brought the same setup and notes, and obviously not going to work for them here today as he has some pretty he heavy damage to both sides of that car and will likely be off the pace for the rest of the race. So Ethan Lin from the pole leaves them back as he has dominated this race. They, of course, stay out, and Lin will lead back to the green flag. Come back to green on lap number eight. Ethan Lin still out front. All 33 cars stay in the race, so none have retired. And the 20 car of Ethan is still out front. In second, you have Oscar Isaac. Third car of Friesen. Jason Larker, second in points, is fourth. And Luigi in fifth. Then Colton Young in sixth. Jonathan Buford, seventh. Steve Morgan in eighth. Trey Ray in ninth. And Cynthia Bright rounding out the top ten. So as we mentioned prior uh, to the race starting, this race last season had a lot to do with how the championship shook up. That is because there was a big crash 
on lap 15 going to lap 16. So watch out for that if that possibly happens here today as the green flag is going to be back waving. We're back racing, but we saw a big crash where a lot of the leaders were involved. Jake West, uh, last season's champion, actually missed the crash from second position. Luke Rainey was involved from the back of the pack, and uh, that is how Luke Rainey actually lost this championship. If Jake West were involved and got damaged and retired from the race or even finished just a few positions back, uh, Rainey would have been the one to win the championship. So just getting a little bit lucky here for Jake West won him that championship. For a second, car of reason is underneath Oscar Isaac. Jason Larkin gets shoved up high by Code Luigi. And Ethan Lynn doing a great job of keeping that race lead. And that 20 car looks pretty, pretty strong here today. Three wide now for the second position. Cole Luigi going to make it to the bottom lane. Colton Yo, the, old, the uh, double O, pushing him through. Oscar Isaac up top, not where he wants to be. Might want to get down and fast. Cole Luigi still three wide with those guys. Isaac still three wide up top. Trey Rainey also in this bottom lane. Jonathan Buford, Cynthia Bright cuts off Jake West. Oscar Isaac still up against the wall. He actually does a very, very nice job of keeping it down low enough to where he won't hit the wall. And Ethan Lynn still dominating. Out front, controlling both lanes. Here comes Colton Young, the double O. Trey Rain in the 60 car. Jason Larkin now put to the middle lane, not where he wants to be. Second in points, as we mentioned. J.J. Reed is the car right behind him, but Reed might get shuffled out by Steve Larker. There you go, three wide everywhere. Code Luigi, the one up top. Oscar Isaac up top. Jake West up top. Luigi into the wall. Saves it. Car frees now of line. Comes up. No further contact made. Trey Rainey and Jonathan Buford now fighting for that second position as they are close behind. The Larkers have teamed up down the bottom lane working together. Jason Larker, the one out front. Steve Larker behind him. And where is JJ Reed and all this? I believe he's right behind them. Yes, he is. He's right behind them in that number 35 white car. His team is up there dominating this race and leading. He doesn't have a teammate too far back from him on the inside lane. So 10 laps to go here at Charlotte. Ethan Lynn continuing to dominate. But Jonathan Buford and Cynthia Bright are trying to run down now. If they can get single filed out, they can possibly catch that 20 car. But uh, he just looks very, very strong here today. Jason Larker shoved up the track by Steve. Colton Yo coming back, trying to get back into that top three. Jonathan Buford has cleared. Watch this now. Can he gain on that 20 car? Koluigi once again to the wall. Saves it. Keeps off everyone. No caution. Jonathan Buford. Up onto the back of that number 20 car. Three wide behind. Who is that shoved up high? It looks to be your points leader, J.J. Reed, the one all the way up top. He got into the wall just a little bit right there. It was that blessing in disguise. If, if he can get clear of this three wide, you want to be in the middle lane in this corner. It looks like he does get back down line. So possibly scraping that wall was a little bit of a blessing right there. So you don't want to go up top three wide off of turn number four. So still out front, Ethan Lynn. Jonathan Buford's on the back bumper of him, but now can he make the move is the question. And the Larkers still working together. Steve Larker now out front. Jason Larker is now pushing Steve up to the front. As we look for the race lead, Jonathan Buford is underneath Ethan Lynn down the back stretch. Couldn't hold it down there, but can he drive into turn three, push the 20 up the track, and he might have that position off of turn number four. Jake West into the wall behind. Luke Rainey down to Greg Lee. They save it. No caution. As this is now the lap where the big crash happened last season in this exact race. They're going to go three wide for a second. Ethan Lynn, the one up top. Steve Larker going to force his hole to the bottom lane. Colton Yo going to go into the middle. They're still three wide. Jason Larker, the one down low. Jonathan Buford now challenged by Steve Larker for that race lead. Buford holds it for now. Larker, they'll come with a big run to the bomb. Ethan Lynn, the one three wide up top. He's going to hit it. Go down. He's going to get spun by Trey Rainey once again on the same lap. Cynthia Bright, Alexander Rowe, and some others are going to get involved. Luke Rainey is involved. Jake West goes spinning through the grass. Does a 360. Gets it going. Here come some cars. Alexander Cornish, John Gambit, Timothy Heath, Tim Randolph, Greg Lee with damage. Race back. Won by John Gam or Jonathan Buford, excuse me. And how that wreck is eerily similar to the one just last season. The same lap and kind of the same circumstances happened. Three wide for second. And uh, that did not work out too well. So the dominant car of the day, Ethan Lynn. Your points leader involved, J.J. Reed. Look at the damage to that 35 car. Yeah, that, they might try and fix that, but it's not going to be raceable. Jason Larker escapes unscathed. He's right now in the third position. So Ethan Lynn spun into his teammate and a lot of other cars. Let's check out what happened. Off a of four, three wide. Ethan Lynn up top in the number 20. 
Gonna get into that wall, come down, Trey Rainey is there. Rainey spins him around, gets Alexander Rowan. That actually saves Trey Rainey's race right there as he goes through the grass, comes back up, and uh, keeps his spot. But Cynthia Bright, nowhere to go. Steve Morgan, that's where JJ Reed got his damage. Jose Fernandez, Greg Lee, Luke Rainey, Jake West goes spinning through the grass. Derek Hamill, Jonathan Reigns, Danny Bright. Evan Hunter steps on the brakes. I believe he's able to escape without much damage. Lord Alano, the 0-2 car. Here comes Alexander Cornish. Timothy Heath, Tim Randolph, and John Gambit to all pile in as well. So, very, very similar to what happened last season. Just last season, we had a car go upside down. But, same lap, same circumstances, and same thing happened with cars coming flying in there. And not many cars get away unscathed. Your points leader, one of them involved. Here come the other cars flying in, as you can see up at the top of your screen. So, let's go on board with points leader, J.J. Reed. The damage to the 35, pretty, pretty big. Who did he make contact with in this crash? Oh, he about had that thing missed, and then that is where the cars were coming down the track, and he got his damage. Pulsar, dominant car of the day, Ethan Lin involved. I cannot believe the uh, 20 car is still rolling after that. You saw how many hard hits were taken there. Lord Delano up there in points also gets involved. See, she's hanging out the back. She sees the wreck happening. You have to race back, obviously. You think there might be a hole at the top. It might start sliding down to the bottom. You see that there's cars up there and there's nowhere to go. And then Jake West, last season's champion. Remember we said he won the championship last season by missing this crash? And uh, gets involved in this one. However, he's not in championship contention. there does a great job though keeping it off the wall keeps it going straight and no further contact made he should be able to continue on so back to the line in front it was Jonathan Buford in the 45 of course they will stay out with two to go it's gonna be a restart here at Charlotte coming back to the restart with two laps to go on lap number 20 so this will be the final restart Alexander Cornish Derek Hamill Greg Lee Luke Rainey Ethan Lynn JJ Reed your points leaders out and then Cynthia Bright also retires so we'll have 26 cars finish this race out Jonathan Buford out front trying to hold on and win. He took the lead from Ethan Lynn. Hasn't looked back since. Steve Larker in second. Third, Jason Larker. They've been making some magic as of late. Finishing in the top three. Both of them, I believe, a few races ago, if not last race. Colton Neal in fourth and Trey Rainey then in fifth. Then got DJ Ray in sixth. Oscar Isaac seventh. Cole Luigi in eighth. Isaac Nichols ninth. And Carter Friesen rounding out the top ten. So here we go. Final restart. Two to go. Jonathan Buford, the one out front. Can he hold off the Larker boys to win? We're about to find out as we take the green flag. Buford gets away from Steve Larker, and Jason Larker might have spun the tires just a little bit in the number 25. Everyone staying single file in lane. Some um, slower cars move out of the way. Some of the damaged cars moving down low. Oscar Isaac trying to make up ground. DJ Reed. They go down the back straightaway. Steve Larker has a run from Jason Larker. Can Jonathan Buford hold them off? Jason Larker might make the move for himself. Steve going to block him off. Five cars pull away. Steve Larker to the inside. Jonathan Buford at the white flag. We're on the final lap of the Pencil 200. Steve gets back up in line. Jason moves to the bottom. Trey Rennie following that 25 through. Down the back stretch. They will come. Jason Larker at the run to Jonathan Buford. Will it be enough? Into turn three. Buford has gotten clear. Trey Rennie is pushing Jason Larker for all it's worth as they go through three and four and off of four. Jonathan Buford clears on the restart. He'll hold off the Larker boys to win it here at Charlotte. Great run there for Jonathan Buford to block Jason and Steve to get to victory lane. Some issues back there. The double zero slams on the brakes. In front of Code Luigi. Swerving up into him. I don't know if there's some contact made coming to the checker flag or what. But I don't think Colton's too happy with Code right there. Yeah, we'll go back to the white flag and see if anything happened there between the double zero. They can see the double zero takes the white flag in fourth. Trey will get to his inside. That just looked like Colton was swerving it over uh, at Code and he slowed down from him at, uh, after the checkered flag was taken. 
So Oscar Isaac's going to dive bomb to the inside here. Kaluji going to try and follow that 44 through. Do they make contact coming to the line? No, the 10 wasn't even near the double zero. And watch this as they go into turn one. Breaks. Luigi stops. Colton kind of blocking that 10 car. I don't know if they were probably, they, they might have been together earlier in the race and possibly something happened there between the two. I don't know what the issue there is with Colton, you know, and Luigi, but obviously Colton not too happy with Cody swerving at him, brake checking him. In the meantime, John Z. Beaver going to go to victory lane and the Penzo 200 at Charlotte. Let's now go check the finishing results. Here are the finishing results from the Penzo 200 at Charlotte. There were two caution flags for eight laps, and there was one lead change among two different drivers. Jonathan Beaufort leads seven of the 21 laps to get to victory lane after starting in the second position. Jason Larker ends up second, but he gets to the points lead because of a great run here today. Steve Larker ends up third. Both the Larkers have had some great last few races. Trey Rainey ends up fourth, and Colton Yo in fifth. They got Oscar Isaac in sixth, Col or, uh, Code Luigi in seventh, Carter Friesen in eighth, DJ Reed ninth, and Isaac Nichols. Rounds out the top 10. So there's your top 20. With well, some of these got drivers having such good days, Isaac Nichols now up to third in points. Uh, as we mentioned, Jason Larker takes the points lead from the man who finishes in the 28th position. J.J. Reed involved in that big crash. Finishes 28th. He falls to second in points in uh, a pretty good distance behind Jason Larker. Uh, you can see Ethan Lynn, the other guy who led laps this race, 14 of the 21 from the pole. He had a very, very dominant car, but once Jonathan Buford got to his inside, he went up top three wide, and was a, and basically the start of that crash, so tough break for him, finishing in the 29th position. He took some hard hits, though. I'm not surprised that that car was not able to, to continue rolling. Let's now go look at the point standings. Not many races left, and here are the point standings. Jason Larker gets it out front by only 27 points over J.J. Reed. Reed falls to second, Isaac Nichols up to third. Those two are teammates, remember. Lord Lionel falls to fourth, only one point shy of Isaac Nichols. And Alexander Rowe in the top five. They got Jose Fernandez in sixth, Tim Randolph in seventh, Danny Bright eighth, Jonathan Reigns in ninth, and Colton Yo running out the top ten. So there's your top 20. And right now it's a two-horse race for that championship. Jason Lecker and J.J. Reed. But if those two remember, as we've mentioned, if those two falter just a little bit, Nichols and Lord Lionel will be right there. And then possibly if a lot of people falter, we still have... Michigan, Talladega, Homestead, you know, all those tracks where something can go bad in a hurry. Look at the rest of the points field. These guys down here just trying to get victories. Something that John Gamet, Cynthia Bright, and Cortez Newman have done, but they're still down there in the bottom half, bottom five, six of the points, so not what they want. So the next race will be one that we mentioned, the Gary 200 at Michigan. See you guys then.